that's it for today's show. If you want to make anything from today's programme, then just check out the Fingertips website. The address. You're watching the show with everything you could ever want to make or do right at your fingertips. I'm Stephen. I'm Fern. And here's what's on today's show. Food Fingertips gives you the ABC of Arctic banana chock. We show you how to have fun with fingertips face swapping. And in physics, fingertips get set for blast off with balloon rockets. And for all the fingertip details, you can video the show and play it back. Look on the website or grab your pen and paper and jot it down straight away. This is the fingertips two half shot. How about this bursting through your wardrobe or crashing through your bedroom door? Now, you're probably thinking he looks really difficult to make. Well, I'll tell you what, with the fingertips know-how, it's a doddle. Because everything you need to make it can be packed inside an envelope. It's incredible, isn't it? And for those who don't believe me, let me show you. Look, this is all you need, and the big envelope itself. Now, first of all, you need to take your big envelope. This one's a size A3, and need to cut off the flap. Once you've done that, these corners at the top here need to be folded over. You want to fold them just past halfway, press them down, and put a nice big piece of tape in place there so they don't flap about everywhere. And then do exactly the same the other side. Try and keep them quite equal, so just past halfway again. Bit more tape. And as you can see, at the top here, we've left a bit of a gap, and this will make a nice shark nose shape. Just like this. Realistic, isn't it? Once you've done that, you need to open out your envelope and stuff it with some balls of newspaper. Now, you don't want to put too many in, just enough to make it a nice, firm shark head shape. And you see, this is why we've used envelopes, because they're nice and easy to stuff. There you go, Steve. Fantastic. Now, the next bit can be a bit tricky. What you want to do is get yourself a paper dinner plate and put it on the open end of the envelope like this, and then tape it in place. So let's tape this bit down to there, like that. And this bit on this side. And don't worry about the rim that comes over the edge just around here, because that comes in very useful, and I'll show you how a bit later. And now you want to make your shark's jaw using your smaller envelope. This one's a size A4. Once again, you want to cut off the flap, but this time you do it when the flap's closed. You actually cut a bit of the envelope off as well. Once you've done that, you want to fold over the corners like you did in the last one. But this time, take the fold right down to the bottom of your envelope. Now, watch this bit, it's a little bit tricky because you want to make a second fold. You see the corners that you've got here? You just want to fold those over like that, just get a bit of tape take them in place, try and keep them equal both sides, so do exactly the same just there. And you'll see you get quite a nice round shape for your shark's jaw. And once you're happy with this shape, you can get your shark's head back. I right, thank you, Stephen. And then take your jaw, put it into place, and then you can stick it down. And it's now time to make the tail of the fingertips two half sharks. So get yourself another A3 envelope, and as you did before, chop off the flap like that. And you're going to make a cone shape, but you must make sure you leave a, a gap at the bottom about that much. So you fold it over like this, all the way down to the bottom, and then tape that in place like this. Do the same on the other side. Remember, make sure you leave that gap at the end just there. So that goes all the way down. Tip that in place as well. And just to neaten it up, you want to fold over this bit here. And again, a bit of sticky tape to keep that in place. And you'll now see at the bottom of the envelope, there's a hole, and this is where the towel fin will go. Then, as you did before, open up the end and fill it with balls of newspaper all the way to the top. And then get yourself a paper side plate and stick that on the top. Now, I've made a tail fin and a fin out of a cereal box. And this tail fin here just slots into the hole that Stephen left earlier in the envelope, and the fin just sits right on top of the shark's back. You then want to cover your whole shark head and tail in paper mache. So, paint on strips of newspaper using a mixture of PVA glue mixed half and half with water. And when you've covered the whole thing, leave it out to dry overnight. Now, once it has dried, it'll be nice and solid and you can paint it. 
If you want a reminder of how to make the fingertips too hard shark, then check out the fingertips website. We'll give you the address at the end of today's program. And if you click on top make, we'll even give you examples of how to paint it. How about yellow or even green? And don't forget, you can also use wildlife magazines. They've got some really good pictures of sharks and you can copy the colours from in there. I'm going to get painting. All right, you do that. Now, if you'd like to have a go at making the fingertips two half shark, you can watch back the show if you videoed it today. You can check out our website. If not, grab a pen and paper right now, because here's a recap. Fold down the corners of a large A3 envelope to make the head shape. Stuff the envelope with balls of newspaper, then tape a paper plate over the open end. Make the jaw by folding a smaller A4 envelope. Take the other big A3 envelope and fold it to make a cone shape. And once again, stuff with balls of newspaper and then tape a paper plate onto the open end. Add a tail fin and a fin. Cover it in paper mache and it's ready to paint. And then it will look something like this. It's fantastic, isn't it? And you can even make little baby sharks using A4 and A5 envelopes. Oh, and I promised to tell you what the rim around the edge of the plate was for, didn't I? It's for pinning and sticking your shark to any surface. So once you've made your two-half shark, you can crash him through anywhere. Because this is the part of the programme where we show you how to make something in under a minute using odds and ends that you can find around your home. Now today it's my turn to make. And it's my turn to time. And this is all it takes, just that. Not a lot of stuff. Not a lot of stuff, is there? But it is a top, top make. And you've got to try and guess what it is under the minute. Are you ready? Of course I'm ready. OK, here we right. go. On your marks. Get set. You're not going to start yet, are you? No. Right, start now, go. OK. All right then, take some rice and pour a nice big pile into some clear wrap. A bit, whoa, a bit too much. A, bit, a little bit more. There you go. Just wrap it up into a parcel like this. Ten seconds so, already okay, gone. Okay, okay. Now just cut off the top so it's nice and neat. Get yourself a blue and just slice Your the end off. Time like is that. running out for this 20 seconds. This could take some time to fix. It's quite tricky. Just squish the whole thing over like that. There we are. Oh, rice spillage. Whoops. There we 25 go. 25 seconds <laughs> gone. Okay. I work well under pressure. Don't worry. There we go. Another one. And uh, ready. That's 30 seconds bit. gone. Stop the clock! Ooh. Thank you very much. Look at that. What do you think? You've got to know what this is. Well, I'll tell you what, if you pick the right colours, you've got some squidgy eyes. And if you make three, one, two, three, you've got yourself some juggling balls. They're really cheap and easy to make. They make great presents and they'll keep you busy for hours. Go on, get juggling, Steve. Okay. There we go. So go on, see if you can beat the clock and make some fingertips one-minute juggling balls. This part of the show is Food Fingertips, where over the next few weeks we'll be giving you some great ideas that are fun to make and great to taste. Coming up now is a Food Fingertip which combines the taste of the tropics with the cool of the Arctic. And it's as easy as A, B, C. We're going to make chocolate banana lollies. First, find your banana. Then, peel your banana and dispose of skin. Carefully! Then insert your lolly stick. You'll probably notice how easy the lolly stick slips in. The trouble is it slips out just as easily. So what is the solution? The freezer. Pop your banana into the freezer and freeze. Yes, leave the banana in the freezer for a few hours. It is now frozen solid and securely stuck to the stick. So you've had the A, you've had the B, it's now time for the C, chocolate. And you're going to have to melt it, and here's the fingertips way of doing that. Pour some recently boiled water very carefully into a big bowl, about a quarter way up, like that. Then. Get your bowl of chocolate that you've all already broken up. Use as much as you want and put this carefully into the bigger bowl, like that. And then give it a stir until it starts to melt. And when your chocolate has melted, it will look like this. 
and it's now time for the dunking. Now, to make the dunking of the frozen banana easier, we've put our chocolate into a glass. Got me frozen banana? Are you ready? I am. Here we go. Dunk it in. The chocolate's on it like that. Just twist the chocolate round. Now for the hundreds and thousands. There's that side. All the way round. And there you have it. Look how the warm chocolate is chilled by the frozen banana and the hundreds and thousands are locked in place. Perfect. Not quite, Stephen, because you told everyone about the ABC, but what about D? Oh, the D. I'm sorry. Delicious. So feed your face with some fantastic food finger zips. That is nice. Well, what do you think? I've got a little bit of Stephen in me. And I've got a little bit of fun in me. You see, video technology like this is becoming more and more easy to do. But don't worry if you don't have a TV studio handy. Because we're going to show you a fun fingertips way to achieve the exact same effect, just using card and magazines. Oh, that's better. Now, first of all, you need to decide whose face you're going to play around with. I, of course, chosen Mr. Stephen Mulhern. Now, you need to get a picture of someone looking straight ahead with not too much hair going onto the face. You need to stick it onto some card, put some sticky back plastic over the top, and then cut it out. Once you've done that, you need to go through lots of magazines and pick out other faces which are looking straight ahead, and then cut out pairs of eyes, mouths, nose, ears, and hair. Once you've done that, stick them onto a piece of card so they're nice and firm, and then cut these pieces out. Once you've done that, you're ready to have some fingertips fun face swapping. Let's give Stevie a nice girly eye there and quite a big nose, some luscious lips for Steve as well. A big eye and quite a small eye and a nice big smile. That's a nice eye and how about a little one there? Look at that. Aha. Now you could try making a video sequence of your funny faces by putting a video camera in and out of record when your hands aren't in shot. And it's quite a good idea to put it on a tripod so it doesn't wobble around and also use a remote control as well. Oh, he's got a big nose. He's smiling. He's frowning. Oh, he's looking up. Another smile. Huge nose. Big blue eyes. And if you've got a computer... Then you can do something similar. Now, first of all, you need to load a picture of yourself or a member of your family into the computer. And when you've done that, some programmes will let you, uh, stretch the face like that. And then you could even shrink the face like this or make it even bigger, like that. Ooh, bit, bit too, bit too big, let's bring it back down, like that. Now, the program we're using here on Fingertips is very special because you can actually change, like, hairstyles. Let's give Fern a new hairstyle, let's see what fits. <laughs> I think, um, yes, let's go with that one. Now, let's change our eyes. Oh, look at this. Oh, that's nice, yes, very nice. And maybe a new nose. Should we go for a new nose? How about... That, yeah, I think that one suits. <laughs> and finally, the mouth. And there's a whole new fern. Fantastic. Now, look, if you want to have a go on this, we put um, our pictures on the website. We'll give you the address at the end of the show. But promise me one thing, you won't make us look too silly. Oh, come on, guys. I said not too silly. We're going to have a balloon race. Five, four, three, two, one. Blast off! Come yes! on! Yes! I won! Yes! yes! What are you I about? I so won! You did not win. I, I always win, win the races. This is obviously in no way to a balloon race. race. Excuse me. Even, I won Excuse, it. Me. Excuse me. Hello. Excuse me. Off. Get off. Go. Go. Oh, off. So off. In. Well, was it the longest in the air, the furthest travelled? How do you know who won? Well, this is Physics Fingertips, the part of the show where we show you how to have fun with physics. Here's how to control that balloon's power and have a proper race. We're going to show you how to harness that random movement and create a jet-propelled elastic thruster. First, get yourself a straw and a piece of string. Make sure the straw can run easily along the string and tie one end of it to the finishing post, which for now will be where you are. Then, run the straw along the string to make sure it has a knot-free run. And when you're confident about that, you need to get yourself a balloon and blow the balloon up. And then, don't tie the uh, neck of the balloon. Just keep it in place by wrapping it around a pencil and putting a peg on it like that. Now, what you need to do 
is tape the straw to the middle of the balloon so it's evenly balanced, like this. There we go. And when you've done that, you need to take the peg off. Keep hold of the neck because you don't want any of the air to get out. Then pull your string taut and let go of your balloon. Whoa, not bad. But now, meet the thruster Mark II. It's simple, it's scientific, it's superb, and it cannot be improved. Improvement number one. I've used nylon instead of string, less friction. Improvement number two. I've used two balloons instead of one. I've put a piece of card at the side of my straw and stuck a balloon to each side. Improvement number three. Looks. I've added this little wavy man and some lovely streamers. All right, Phil. Well, look, it's all very pretty, isn't it? Come on. Let's get on with the race. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Blast off! <laughs> So go on, if you want to make your blaster beautiful... Oh, not. ..have some physics fingertips fun and get racing. Next time on Fingertips, stretch your imagination. We'll show you how to make the fingertips stretchy jaws. Now, they look tasty. They are tasty. <laughs>